This is the Lower East Side today. The sounds of hammers and drills and traffic. The landscape virtually changing before your eyes. The crowds of new immigrants and old. New buildings and old. The fabric of this old gateway to New York as it is today, evoking memories of how it was. Once there were pushcarts here, selling everything from pants, shirts, dresses, and hats to fruits and vegetables. The streets were brimming with people. In the old days, many of the people were Irish immigrants. Then came waves of Italians and Jews. They tolerated each other, growing up in tenement houses like this one, preserved as the Tenement Museum. In this dwelling, you can see how the immigrants lived back in the 1870s and later in the Depression Age. An Italian family lived here back in the 1870s. In the 1930s, a Jewish family lived next door. The apartments were small, but large families managed to eke out an existence here. Settlement houses were founded by German-Jewish philanthropists to bring culture to the new immigrants. Some, like the Educational Alliance, are still functioning today, trying to help the newest wave of immigrants, the Chinese. Yeah, she sleeps. Very good. Very nice. These are young Chinese women in a beginning class in English. No. I like it. <laughs> it's called immersion. No Chinese is spoken. We like to go to see the movie. In this session, they're learning about icebreakers, what to say at a party to strangers to get a conversation going. The teacher explains. They're asking each other questions like, do you like to go to the movies? Um, how many hours of TV do you watch a day? Um, do you like to cook? And they're comparing each other and their answers. They're industrious. They're industrious. They're lovely. Yeah, they work very hard. One student, Li Ying, talked enthusiastically about her three-year-old son, who's studying English, too, in a classroom upstairs. She spoke about his love of pumpkins. She pronounced it pumpkins. He learned more English now. For example, he went to see, he see the pumpkin. He said, Mommy, this is pumpkin. So Pumpkin? Pumpkin. Yes. In a classroom upstairs, the children of these mothers are learning English. On a desk nearby are posted the rules for getting along. Listen, share, take turns. Their teacher says... They come over to me and they're speaking language. I mean, they enjoy themselves. They're so happy. I mean, that's the best part. Over the past hundred years, Jews from Eastern Europe, Italians, and Puerto Ricans have filled the tenements on the Lower East Side. Now there are new buildings attracting younger people, and many structures were renovated to lure middle-class buyers and renters. In 1891, the Educational Alliance was founded by German-Jewish philanthropists, already well-established in America, to bring what they regarded as culture to the waves of Jews from Eastern Europe. About 1917, my mother and father met watching a basketball game outside the Alliance. Over the years, the Alliance has tried to meet the needs of new immigrant groups. Beautiful. The present CEO, Robin Bernstein, recalls the Alliance's beginnings. We were started 122 years ago with the huge influx of Eastern European Jews. Um, we were founded by the uptown German Jews who were embarrassed by their Eastern European co-religionists, their cousins. Embarrassed? You mean they had, had to clean up their act? Yeah, if you read the literature, I love reading the history of the Educational Alliance. They talk about them as fat, unslovenly, uneducated, uncultured. Gentrification of the Lower East Side, says Bernstein, is a challenge this institution is meeting. We actually decided... Um, based on the fact that this was the neighborhood that had the greatest disparity between great wealth and great poverty. We saw it more as an opportunity um, to bring the diverse folks who are choosing to live in this neighborhood together. A flood of Chinese immigrants fills East Broadway every day. It recalls the mass immigrations of the early 20th century, and there's something purposeful about the faces you see in the new wave. You like mustard in your sandwich? Still, on Houston Street, there's a gastronomic monument that's endured for 123 years. 
Katz's Delicatessen, where huge pastrami and corned beef sandwiches and succulent hot dogs are feasted on every day. The perspective of owner partner Fred Austin. The neighborhood itself, because of the influx of young people, uh, has seen many dramatic changes. A lot of bars, uh, music venues, uh, restaurants. In a coffee shop, past, present, and future seem to meld. A group of old timers, middle class retirees, are schmoozing, even as younger neighborhood residents busily work their laptops. The men bought their apartments when they were young and have witnessed the dramatic changes. The change in the neighborhood is fantastic. When I moved in, my apartment cost approximately $2,000. It's today worth about $400,000. I won't see it. My kids will. <laughs> On Essex Street, Alan Kaufman is proud of running the last pickle store. Once there were many pickle stores clustered right here. It was known as the Pickle District. But as time progressed, uh, more and more stores closed because their children don't want to go into this business. They want to go into something like a dentist or a lawyer. They don't want to work hard. A customer from Toronto, she used to live in New York, came by for a pickle fix. So you want a little spicy, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, pickle in my mouth. <laughs> I found it on a walking tour when I first moved to New York. And I have been coming by for two years now. When I move away, I crave it like crazy. And there's one that's kind of... Robin Bernstein grew up in an impoverished home. Her mother was a widow struggling to feed her family. Times were tough. It's one reason she's so exhilarated by this job, the chance to help others. It heals me every day that I come in here, though that kind of hole going back to when I was eight years old and um, all of that loss, it gets healed every day. For generation after generation, the Lower East Side has nurtured new immigrants to the city. And here on East Broadway, you can see the latest way Chinese newcomers keeping alive an old tradition of New York. On East Broadway, Gabe Pressman for New York Nightly News.